Ciao a tutti and welcome back to Channel Dolce Vita with Luca. Today we're going to learn the Italian future tense. So there are two future tenses in Italian. First one is called futuro semplice. The second one is called futuro anteriore. In this video, we're going to learn about the futuro semplice. Stay tuned. I got two good news about the future tense and the futuro semplice in particular. Um, before I share the news with you, let me remind you a couple of things. If you enjoy this video, you might want to show some appreciation by giving us the thumbs up or you can share the video or you can just leave us a comment, let us know what you think, you know, just talk to us. The second thing I want you to know is to stay with me until the end of this video. Why? Because it's important that you stick with me. And no, it's because I'm gonna share with you a very common mistake that English speakers make. This is very common and it's a bad, bad mistake. Uh, so we're gonna learn how to avoid it, okay? We'll talk about this at the end of the video. Good news number one, the Italian futuro semplice is not really used that much in colloquial Italian. Why? Because we usually replace it with the present tense, just like it happens in English. I'll give you examples. Tomorrow I'm going to Milan. In Italian will be domani vado a Milano. Domani vado a Milano. So vado is the present tense. The verb is andare. Io vado. I go. So present tense for the future, for something that is happening tomorrow. The Italian course is starting in September. Or the Italian course starts in September. In Italian is il corso di italiano inizia a settembre. Il corso di italiano inizia a settembre. As you can see, iniziare is used in the present tense. What are you doing next week? Cosa fai la settimana prossima? Cosa fai la settimana prossima? So once again, we're talking about something that is happening next week in the future, but we use the present tense. Cosa fai la settimana prossima? I decided next year we're spending the summer at the lake. Ho deciso l'anno prossimo passiamo l'estate al lago. Ho deciso l'anno prossimo passiamo l'estate al lago. I'll call you tomorrow. Ti chiamo domani. Ti chiamo domani. It's as simple as that. Good news number two. The regular forms of the futuro semplice are very, very simple. Remember the three groups we learned in Italian in 30 days? Are, ere, ire. Okay, you should remember that. It's, it's essential. If you don't remember that, go back to Italian in 30 days and, you know, just brush it up a little bit. Okay? So, uh, we have these endings. Are, ere, and ire. If we remove the endings, we have the stem of the verb. So, what you need to do is simply to add this. For first and second group, you add ero, erai, era, eremo, erete, eranno. For example, parlare becomes parlerò, io parlerò, tu parlerai, lui parlerà, noi parleremo, voi parlerete, loro parleranno. And when it ends in uh, ire, you need to add this. Iro, irai, ira. Iremo, irete, iranno. For example, the verb to finish, finire. Io finirò. Tu finirai. Lui, lei finirà. Noi finiremo. Voi finirete. Loro finiranno. Now, there are two very important verbs. They are actually irregular. And we're going to cover irregular verbs in the next video. But these two verbs are too important not to be covered right now. And they are the verbs to be, essere, and to have, avere. So let's take a look at them. Io sarò. Tu sarai. Lui, lei sarà. 
noi saremo, voi sarete, loro saranno. Sarò, sarai, sarà. Saremo, sarete, saranno. As for the verb to have, io avrò, tu avrai, lui, lei avrà. Noi avremo, voi avrete, loro avranno. Avrò, avrai, avrà. Avremo, avrete, avranno. Now let's move on and learn the, the four cases when we actually use the futuro semplice. Case number one is to express future actions or events that will happen in the future, like we looked at before. Remember, we were using the present tense, but we can use the future tense, futuro semplice. Here are some examples. Next year, I'll leave for India. L'anno prossimo partirò per l'India. L'anno prossimo partirò per l'India. So partire, the third group, partirò. Next month, Andrea Bocelli will sing in Rome. Il mese prossimo, Andrea Bocelli canterà a Roma. Cantare, first group, so lui canterà. Il mese prossimo, Andrea Bocelli canterà a Roma. The second case is when you suppose something. Angela is not here. She must be at the gym. Angela non è qui. Sarà in palestra. So what's, what's happening here? You're supposing that Angela is somewhere else. So in English we say must be. Uh, she must be at the gym. In Italian you use the future tense. Sarà expresses the supposition. Okay? Angela non è qui. Sarà in palestra. They knocked on the door. It must be Luigi. So what are you supposing here? That it must be Luigi. And we'll see in Italian with the future tense. Hanno bussato alla porta. Sarà Luigi. So sarà Luigi. You're supposing that it must be Luigi. Hanno bussato alla porta. Sarà Luigi. This bracelet is made of gold. It must cost a fortune. Questo bracciale è d'oro. Costerà una fortuna. So you're supposing that it costs a fortune. Costerà is the verb costare, to cost. So first group. Questo bracciale è d'oro. Costerà una fortuna. You didn't eat anything? Then you must be hungry. Non hai mangiato niente? Allora avrai fame. So in this case, we're using the verb avere, to have, to suppose. Non hai mangiato niente? Allora avrai fame. Il terzo caso, the third case, is to express doubt or uncertainty. It's getting late. It must be midnight already. So you're not sure, but you think it might be midnight. So in Italian is, si sta facendo tardi. Sarà già mezzanotte. So you're using the verb to be. Sarà. Si sta facendo tardi. Sarà già mezzanotte. It's my fault then. I must be stupid. È colpa mia allora. Sarò stupido. It's like, what can I tell you? È colpa mia allora. Sarò stupido. I must be stupid. I can't find it. Maybe it's this one? Non lo trovo. Sarà questo forse? Non lo trovo. I can't find it. Sarà questo, forse. Maybe it's this one. Il quarto caso, the fourth case, is the concessive form. What is that about? Example. Georgia might be beautiful, but she's obnoxious. So, this is the concessive form. Basically, okay, I'll give you that. She might be beautiful, but she's obnoxious. Okay? In Italian is... Giorgia sarà bella, ma è insopportabile. Giorgia sarà bella, ma è insopportabile. So what we just saw was the positive concessive form, but it can also be negative. Like Tom Cruise might not be my favorite actor, but I respect him. In Italian is Tom Cruise non sarà il mio attore preferito, ma lo rispetto. Tom Cruise non sarà il mio attore preferito, Ma lo rispetto. So you stuck with me so far. Ottimo lavoro. Great job. Well done. 
Okay, now it's time for me to share with you the common mistake that English speakers make. And it's using the present continuous for the future. You can't do that in, in Italian, okay? It's a very rookie mistake, so don't you ever do that. I'll give you the first example I share with you at the beginning of the video. Domani vado a Milano. So in English you could say, tomorrow I'm going to Milan. In Italian you cannot say, domani sto andando a Milano. Why? You can't. Why? Because in Italian the present continuous expresses an action that is happening while you're speaking. So if you're saying sto andando, it means you're in the middle of going. You perhaps you're already in the car or on the train. Okay, so don't do that. Please try and avoid that. We're almost finished with the lesson, guys, but now it's important to practice a little bit. So I'm gonna post some sentences with some blanks. What you want to do is to pause the video and fill in the blanks. You just write it in the comments below, okay? Write the whole sentence with the part that is white, that is blank, you fill it in. Uh, here's what happens. If you pause, you have all the time in the world to fill in the blanks. Then you press play again and you check if you made a mistake or if you got it right. But don't check first. You don't want to cheat, all right? I mean. Also remember there's always extra material that you can download and it's all in the description below. So just check the descriptions and there are links and you can download extra material. That's it amici, la lezione è finita. Lesson is over. I'm gonna see you in the next video. We'll be talking about the irregular forms of the futuro semplice. We'll also talk about some other ways you can actually express the future in Italian. Remember, if you like this video, thumbs up, share it, or just simply let us know in the comments, tell us something. I'll see you very soon. Ciao.